In this video, we're going to look at drawing a frequency diagram and a frequency polygon. I've written a question here. It says the table below shows the length in millimetres of some worms found in Steve's garden. So we have the length and the frequency. We have continuous grouped data. So these are grouped off 0 to 5 millimetres, 5 to 15, 15 to 25, 25 to 45 and 45 to 70. These are lengths, so it's continuous data. They can take any value. So for example, one of the 12 worms in the first category might be 4.32 millimetres. One in the second category could be 6.763 millimetres. So this differs to discrete data that can only take certain values. We're going to start off with a frequency diagram. Often the terminology is changed around from book to book. So what we're going to do is look at some different types of data. What we're going to start with is categorical data. So an example of categorical data might be now favourite football team. So if we have now a favourite football team and we might do a survey on those. So football teams. If we look now at discrete data, so discrete data, that can only take certain values. So for example, we could have shoe size. So shoe size or the number of days you went to school in a week. So it could be zero, it could be one, two, three, four or five. It can't be 4.72. And then on the last one, we're going to look at continuous data. If we have continuous data, this can take any value. So for example, in here, this one right here, we might have a worm that's 20.278436 millimeters. So for example, now this could be the length, so let's put in here, the length of a worm or the height of a person. Length of worm. When we're representing these with diagrams, it's important to distinguish the difference between them. With these two, we're going to have bar charts and there are going to be gaps between the bars. So for categorical and discrete data, we're going to have gaps between the bars. If we have continuous data, we're going to have no gaps, so they'll be touching. Often these are referred to frequency, or referred to as frequency histograms. In terms of this particular course, a histogram will generally deal with frequency density. I've done some videos on histograms, so do check those out, as we're going to uh, focus in this one on the frequency diagram and a frequency polygon. So let's go ahead. What I've got here now is a set of axes and we've got now an X and a Y. On the bottom, I'm going to have the length now. So this is going to be the length in millimetres of the worms. So let's write this in. So we've got now the length in millimetres. And here now, let's just make that a bit neater rather than writing that out. So length in millimetres. And then up the side, we're going to have the frequency. So the number of them. So length in millimetres. And then we're going to have the frequency. So just write in here, frequency, and that's what we'll have. If we look as well, we have uneven class widths or uneven groups. When you come onto histograms and doing frequency density, you'll see something very similar to this. So what I'm going to do now is draw a frequency diagram using this information. So 0 to 5, we've got a frequency of 12. So all I'm going to do is draw now a box. So 0 to 5, 12. So here's 0 to 5 up to this point right here, and I'm just going to go across to 12. And that will give me now that like so. So there we go, that's the first one done. The next one, we're going to have 20, and that's 5 to 15. So there's 5, there's 15, and then we will now go up to 20. So 5 to 15, and it'll look something like that. So just making that nice and neat. The next one, we're going to have 15 to 25, and that's going to be 37. So 37 looks to be about there, and that one is 15 to 25. So make sure if you're asked to put a scale on this that it's actually now in proportion. Okay, so that one's done. Uh, 25 to 45 is going to be 51. So 25 to 45 is going to be 51. So let's locate 51. 51 looks to be about there. And that's going out to 45. So that's going to look something like this. So that's now done. And then the next one, we've got uh, 45 to 70, uh, which is going to be 42. So let's find 42. 42 looks to be about there. 
It's not too easy to see on the screen, but hopefully I've got that in place. And then we'll do something like that. So what I've now drawn is a frequency diagram. So I've got my classes and then I've simply got the frequency. So nice and straightforward, all we do is check our scales are correct, we label them up and then we draw these boxes on there. What we're now going to do is look at drawing a frequency polygon. Frequency polygons are plotted at midpoints and they're simply now lines. So what I'm going to do is plot these at midpoints. So the midpoint of this first particular class is going to be 2.5. We can see that from here. If it's 0 to 5, it's 2.5. And I just take the value of 12. So once we've got a frequency diagram, it's really quite easy to add a frequency polygon. The advantage of a frequency polygon is that if we're using the same scale, we can compare different data sets with a frequency polygon. So let's do the next one. The next one is going to be at the midpoint. So the midpoint we can see quite clearly is going to be 10 and that's going to be 20. So we have all of these now and all I need to do is go ahead and just draw these midpoints. So we can see the midpoint of this one is going to be on 20 and that is now at 30. Seven. So let's put that there and we'll see that this will stack up with what we've got just here. So 37 and 20. Then the midpoint of this one, we're going to put this on. That'll be just there and that's going to be 51. So just putting that like so. And then finally, the last one now, we need the midpoint. So we've got the midpoint of uh, 45 and 70. So what's that going to give me? That's going to give me on my 57 and a half let's find 57 and a half so there's 55 57 and a half looks to be about there okay so all i need to do at this point is just connect these up with a straight line through those points and we have our frequency polygon so frequency diagram on top of it a frequency polygon so that will look something like that that'll connect up there and then we can connect it there and that's done so nice and straightforward a nice straightforward skill the main thing here is to appreciate that these need to be plotted at midpoints as stated uh, earlier one of the advantages of a frequency polygon is that if we have the same set of axes we can compare two or more sets of data so what i've got now is another uh, table here so it says the table below shows the length in millimeters of some worms found in fred's garden so this is a different garden, and what I'm going to do is put them on, and we can see how they uh, worked out against Steve's garden. So we're plotting these at midpoints. So exactly the same what we've got here. We have the same classes. So we've got 0 to 5, and we've got a frequency of 18. So let's go ahead and do that. So none of these have changed in terms of the actual lengths. It's still grouped continuous data with the same class boundaries. So boundary here is 5, and then we're going halfway in. So we need 18. So that looks to be just there. Let's grab that up. 18 is going to be this one here. So there is 18. Let's check I've got that correct. So 20 is just here. And that is going to give me 18. It's quite hard to see on here. But hopefully we've got that right. So that's one, uh, that one's done. Next one is going to be 22. So we can see that 22 is going to be just there let's put that on there's 21 there's 22 and if we just check these ones this one was 20 and that one was 12 so that looks pretty good now the next one is 36 so 36 looks to be one below so that's going to be just there that's 36 and that's at the midpoint the next one we've got is going to be 58 so that's at the midpoint just here so 58 looks to be that one just there. And then the next one we've got is going to be plotted at the midpoint, and that's going to be 54. So 54, there's our midpoint, and we can put that just there. That looks to be 54. So all I need to do is connect this one up. So let's go ahead and connect that one up. And then we can look at these and compare them. So if I do that, what I've got is the frequency polygon now. So frequency polygon will go from there to there to this one just here. We can go now right the way up to that one just there and then this one just here. 
So overall, if we wanted to compare these, we could see now that Fred's worms were generally, now he had more in each of these particular classes right here. So that is the number that he found, and we can see from here that it's clearly more. So this visual representation will allow us to make comparisons, and you might be asked some questions in context. So what I'm going to do is write Steve's, so this is going to give me Steve's. And then on this one, we're going to have threads. Let's put threads on here. And that gives us now the two frequency polygons on the same set of axes with the same scale. So there we go. Drawing a frequency diagram from a table and also frequency polygons on top of them.